just look at those fans that's a section of the fans a huge crowd in the Fox Park Stadium in Hamburg for the last match of the season between the new West German champions Hamburg SV and one of the great German teams of the early 60s Bayern Munich what a climax what a finish to the season Peter Nogli, the Hamburg captain, carrying off the bouquet of flowers he's just been presented with for his team, winning the championship. And a capacity crowd of well over 60,000 are packed into this stadium to pay tribute to this great team, Hamburg, the team of 1979 in the West German National League. Hi there, I'm Toby Charles saying welcome to this fine stadium and also saying hello to all the guests of honor there including uh, manager Gunter Netz, uh, who just went off the screen that's Rudy Kargas, that's not Gunter Netz. Uh, Rudy Kargas, the Hamburg goalkeeper waving to the fans, he's naturally delighted what a great day this is for him Hamburg are the champions, they've done it this year they don't have to worry about today's game but they want to round off the season in a true championship manner Bayern in the, uh, in the dark shirts and uh, white shorts Hamburg the other way around, the uh, white shirts and uh, red shorts going to kick off, playing from left to right. The referee, Mr. Valtert, well-known Bundesliga referee, and Bayern kick off, and away we go. Number seven there, Kevin Keegan, European Player of the Year, 1978. And just listen to that crowd straight away as Bayern get a free kick. And there's the team that have made Hamburg champions. Cargis, the goalkeeper, Kaltz. Hidian, Bullion, Nogli, the back four, that is. And then Hartwig, Maimering, and Maggot in midfield. The three front runners, Keegan, Frobesch, and Ryman. They're the West German champions, 1979. There's Peter Nogli, the captain. And there's the team they're up against today. Sepp Meyer, famous goalkeeper, of course. Kapellmann, Horstmann, Schwarzenbeck, Augenthaler. Niedermeyer, Dürnberger, Breitner, Janson, Oblak and Rummenigge. Some well-known names, some famous names in that Bayern team, but also some famous names missing, of course. Names like especially Franz Beckenbauer and Gert Müller and also Uli Hoeneß. Uli Hoeneß, who uh, in future will be the general manager, non-playing manager of the, uh, of the Bayern club. And it's Bayern on the attack at the moment with uh, Jupp Kapellmann who was at one time the most expensive player in German football. But now Hamburg on the break with Magath. Long ball looking for the head of Horst Hrubbush. Can Hrubbush keep it in play? Yes, he can. Little trip by Hrubbush. And there's Sepp Meyer. Sepp may be 34 years of age, but he's still one of the finest goalkeepers in the world. And still number one choice for the West German national team. Close up there of Sepp. Always a character. Always loves to uh, delight and entertain the crowd. There's a big crowd here today to entertain. There's Keegan. It's interesting, actually, that quite a few fans uh, in the stadium are waving the Union Jack, the British flag, because uh, Keegan, of course, English international, he's the darling of the crowd here, maimering into the middle, rubbish going in there. In fact, Keegan was saying earlier this season that... Uh, Rubesh will go in with his head where he, Keegan himself, wouldn't like to put his feet. That's Dürnberger, very fast midfield player and a good little chip, but the, uh, the linesman had his flag up for offside. Ben Dürnberger was out uh, quite a bit this season with an injury, but he seems to be back to form now. No to Keegan. Keegan, the leading goal scorer for Hamburg this season with uh, 16 Bundesliga goals. Hidian, the left back, being his man well, but Kipelman going with him. Hidian trying to do a left winger's job there and losing out. And now Branko Oblak, Yugoslav international, fine ball player. Crowd not liking that decision by Mr. Valtek, but a perfectly good decision. It was a foul by Hidian. And a foul by Hartwig this time. 
It's interesting, actually, that this game is so tough and the players giving everything they've got right at the start because, uh, because really neither side has all that much to play for now except that they want to give a good performance in their last, uh, in their last match of the season. Hamburg are already certain of winning the German Championship because they're three points ahead of their nearest rival, Stuttgart. And with only one game each for, for the sides to play, they can no longer be overtaken, of course, Hamburg. So they are certain of the championship. And Bayern uh, are certain of finishing among the uh, next four teams in the league, which will guarantee them a place in the UFA Cup. That's the European Football Union Cup next season. So uh, it's really nothing to play for except uh, for pride. Of course, professional footballers, professional soccer players, they've got lots of that. Hamburg want to show that they are certainly the best. And apart from that, they haven't lost at home here in the Folks Park Stadium since, uh, since April 1978. They want to keep that kind of record. But Bayern also want to show, I think, that they're a team to be reckoned with, or they're going to be a team to be reckoned with again uh, in future. After Franz Beckenbauer left in 1970, uh, 1977, and then Gert Müller having a couple of bad seasons as well, and then eventually leaving, now things haven't gone all that well for Bayern Munich, but they're starting to put it together again now. The fans won't worry him, of course. He's played in some of the uh, toughest and also hottest places in the world. He's used to fans shouting at him, barracking him, booing him. That doesn't worry Sepp Meyer. Oh, bad mistake, bad misunderstanding there between uh, Keegan and Maimering. That's Rummenigge. Another West German international. Keegan, right through, not offside. Kevin Keegan should have done more with that one. He let himself be robbed at the last moment there. I think Kevin a little bit annoyed with himself, not showing it, but I'm sure he is. Yep, Capelman there alongside Kevin Keegan. Janssen and Kautz. And there's Paul Breitner, the midfield motor in the uh, Bayern team. Used to be, of course, uh, with the West German national team in 1974, one of the best left-backs in the world. Now a fine midfield player. And there's that old tough character, Georg Schwarzenbeck. Not quite the player he was since uh, Beckenbauer left, because he used to rely quite a lot on Franz Beckenbauer, Schwarzenbeck, but still a very tough centre-back and a very good man-to-man -man marker. Capellman. And there's the shot. Oh, what a save by Carter. It was Jürgenberg who put that one in. Bayern still on the ball, or black. Capelman. Oh, there's undoubtedly a foul. Foul by Billy Ryman on Capelman. Capelman will almost certainly be leaving Bayern uh, after this season, so this is probably his last game for Bayern Munich. Paul Breitner, the Bayern number eight. The shirt outside his shorts. Pulls it right across and right back. Flicked on by Rummenigge. Rummenigge there looking for Horseman who'd come up. Horseman, the Bayern number three. Keegan getting up well there. It was a bad one by Ryman. Oblak. This is Jürgenberger. If you didn't know, he's reading that well, the uh, Hamburg captain. Nobody well over 30, a very experienced player. Not the quickest of players, especially when he's turned. But very good when the man's still in front of him. A little back heel there from Keegan, Magart. Well, at the moment, Bayern certainly... Uh, giving as good as they're getting. Jimmy Hartwig with a good tackle there, and Bullion. 
The Yugoslav center back. Hartwig. Maimering. Peter Hedian into the middle. Looking for Hrubesh, but way over the top of him, I think. Actually, Hrubesh ducked, expecting somebody to be behind him. Eventually, Manny Kaus came in there, gains a corner. Takes a quick one. Kaus gets it back from Maimering. Maimering with a chance. Rubesh getting in there, beating to the ball, though, this time by Alguntala. Alguntala, the buy-in there, number five, is centre-back. There's Horst Rubesh. Rubesh actually has been uh, nicknamed uh, Nessie by Kevin Keegan after the Loch Ness Monster. Apparently, Keegan says that uh, Rubesh doesn't mind, even though it's not a very complimentary nickname. That was a back heel that nobody except the Bayern Munich. Magad with a throw in. Foul on Keegan. Keegan takes it quickly. Ryman. Billy Ryman. That was an indication there by Kevin Keegan of how important quick thinking is in soccer. Kaus. Chips it across. Oh, what a save by Meyer. Great header by Magad. The brilliant save by Seth Meyer. There's Felix Magad. He got the header in well. Fans love that kind of thing, of course. That's the kind of stuff champions are made of. Ryman with the corner. The header again. This is a bad one, and Meyer's annoyed. That was Bullion, the centre-back, who scored uh, quite a few valuable goals for Hamburg with his head. He came up there, crept into that box. None of the Bayern players noticed him, and Meyer was really annoyed with, the, with his defence because Bullion was allowed to get in that header. Of course, Bullion should have done a lot more with it. He was completely unmarked, perfectly positioned. It should have been a goal, but it wasn't. So it's still Hamburg, SV nil, Bayern Munich nil. Breitner, Rummenigge. Oblak offside. There's Branko Oblak, also with his shirt outside his shorts. Brighton discussing with the referee whether he thought it was offside or not, but it doesn't make much difference. There's Mamering, Magart, Casper Mamering. Good tackle that by Niedermeyer. At the expense of a corner, though. And there's Willie Raymond. He always takes them from the left with his right foot. Swinging them into goal. Raymond to the near post. Looking for the flick head-on of uh, Keegan there. Counts. Slipping over. Kaltz overdoing it there. Couldn't get past on, couldn't get round Horseman. Manny Kaltz with a pretty bad start and a bad middle patch of the season, actually. But in the last uh, 40 to 15 games, he's really come good, as has most players in the... Uh, in the Hamburg team because Hamburg are undefeated in their last 13 games. Kaltz. Throw in the other way for Bayern. Just listen to those Hamburg fans. 
They're singing the Hamburg Championship winning song. The song that has taken Hamburg to their fourth German Championship. The last one was way back in 1960, so it's been a long wait. But it's certainly been worth waiting for. Sepp Meyer. Offside, you can see the linesman over there, Keegan offside. This is the kind of game, actually, that Bayern Munich love, because uh, they're the team that can rise to the occasion. They've shown this before in top international fixtures, especially when they won the European Champions Cup three times in succession. Keegan, the Brubes, and Setmeyer! What a chance there for Horst Brubes! He would have been much better advised to have tried and chipped it over the diving figure of Setmeyer because Setmeyer had already committed himself to the dive. But as you saw, Rubisch just banged it into the body of Sepmeyer, and all he got was a corner. Mamering. There's the other goalkeeper, Rudy Cargus. Also pulled off a very uh, fine save early on, following a shot from Dernberger. But since then, it's Meyer who's had a lot more to do. And just listen to that crowd as Sepmeyer takes the goal kick. Hidian, Peter Nogli, Keegan switching play well, finding Kaltz, Rubesh, hard fix, over the top. Jimmy Hartwig, also West German International. In fact, the whole uh, midfield trio for Hamburg, Mamering, Magat, and Hartwig, both played for West Germany, and Hartwig and Mamering, members of the current West German national squad. Good run here by Kapellmann. Kapellmann again. Breitner. Kapellmann. It was Rummeniger. Trying to hit it on the turn, on the volley. Karl-Heinz Rummeniger. Rummeniger can be a brilliant player on his day. Could also uh, have his off days. He's a rather inconsistent player. But when he's good, he's very good. So too is this... Uh, Young man, Kevin Keegan, known to all the fans over here as Mighty Mouse. That's a good ball. Breitner. There's a lucky bounce there that got through to Romaniga. And now look at Romaniga go. Bullion in front of him, he beats Bullion. And Cargus, oh, at the second attempt. Well, I was telling you that when Karl Heinz Rummeniger is good, he's very good, and he showed it there. That goal almost gave Bayern the, that uh, chance almost gave Bayern the lead. Grubesch. But still no score here in the Folks Park Stadium. In front of well over 60,000 fans, a capacity crowd. Oh, gets the bar, that header from Hartwig. Raymond, Hartwig again over the top. Jimmy Hartwig, a fine header. Because he had a fine defender alongside him. But he got in the header. Beat Setmeyer, but he couldn't beat the crossbar. Just a small section of this huge crowd. And there's uh, uh, the uh, Bayern, uh, the Hamburg team bench, rather with Branko Tsevich nearest the camera. 
the Hamburg coach. Sebic, who a long time ago used to coach Bayern Munich. About 10 years ago, in fact. Capelman to Breitner. In fact, Sebic uh, was German champion with, uh, with Bayern. That was actually a good effort there. It was an intelligent shot by Rummeniger. He saw that Cargus was slightly off his line. Tried to bend it over him into the corner on that. As you saw, he pulled it too wide, though. But to come back to Branko Tsebic, really is a fine coach, very tough coach. In fact, Kevin Keegan has said he's never trained as hard as his, in his whole life as he has under Tsebic. But as I was saying, Tsebic took Bayern to the championship 10 years ago and he's done the same for Hamburg now so I suppose he could be called a maker of champions there's Nogli Peter Nogli Keegan gets a corner Feldman too close to the ball there. That wasn't a good one from Keegan. Hidian. Bullion leaving it for Kaltz. Intelligent play there by Ivan Bullion. Bullion back to Kaltz. Bullion gets a corner. Number 11 there, Vili Ryman. Quick, intelligent player. Likes to move down the left flank. Mamering with the corner. William going in on Setmeyer. Sporting gesture there by both players. William, who like Kevin Keegan, uh, had a disappointing first season. And the disappointing first half for the fans, the half-time whistle having gone, and the fans haven't seen a goal yet because here in the Fox Park Stadium, with the players walking off the pitch, the score is, or in fact there's no score, Hamburg SV nil, Bayern Munich nil. And now, half-time news break a weekly update in and around germany france with your team just about to kick off any second now against dallas tornadoes you must be wishing you were down there yes i would like to be there but uh, you know it's impossible i had an uh, an uh, cartilage operation and uh, it takes um, four or five weeks more than i'm ready to play do football players like yourself soccer players like yourself enjoy having a rest or do you want to keep playing the game all the time no i want to i'm a really soccer player in my heart I, I love soccer and i wanted to keep playing all the time it must be great for you now having been in the states a couple of years to see how the youngsters of this country are taking up the sport yeah that's uh, make me very hopeful for the future because now the americans they start to play soccer and uh, that makes me very hopeful for the future i know you're a regular viewer a watcher of soccer made in germany uh, does this make you feel homesick when you see all your ex-teammates uh, and all playing? Uh, not really homesick because now I'm two years in the United States and so I'm used to, to know here, uh, to play here and to, to, to know that, to, to have the life here. But I always, I, I, I like to see the exciting German soccer and I think it's a very, very good idea to bring, uh, to bring uh, games from Germany in this country. And so the, the people here, they are now uh, grew up to really soccer fans. Now they can compare how is the soccer in Germany or in South America or in Italy and in the United States. And so it's a very, very good idea. And how do you think then German soccer compares with the other games they see here? Uh, I think the German soccer is still number one in the world. Do you think uh, our show, Soccer Made in Germany, helps to encourage the youngsters in the country to take up the sport? Yeah. Uh, 
I get I got very often the question what a, what a youngster what a kid uh, he want he, he must to do to yeah, to to wake up the interest and to to be a, a soccer player and then a big part I said all the time is watch games watch back watch games because you can learn from alone from watching a lot I now I'm I am watching every game and so in other words you think a lot of the American kids, or all the American kids, can learn from watching soccer made in Germany. Yes, yes. It's a big part to, to be, uh, maybe later on, uh, for, for the future, to watch games. It's very important. Well, thanks a lot, France, and I hope uh, your yeah. cartilage gets better soon that you're out on the pitch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And it's Hamburg to kick off at the start of the second 45 minutes. And the fans, of course, Really uh, longing to see some goals, because that's what soccer is all about, getting the ball into the net. They didn't see any in the first half, maybe they're going to see some in this second half. As far as I can see, both teams unchanged. Both coaches then, uh, Sebic of Hamburg and uh, Chennai of Bayern Munich faith with the players that went into the dressing rooms at half time Keegan Magat pulls it back well but there's Schwarzenbeck Bob Black that was good play by Bright there. Do you see that back heel? Janzon. Augenthaler trying one, and Carter's having to go down for that one. That was a good effort there by the centre-back, Augenthaler. Rudy Cargus. Just about the number two or three goalkeeper in West Germany when he's on form. Mike Kelsey had a bad uh, patch halfway through the season. But he's certainly come good in these last uh, 13 or 14 games. Kaltz. Oh, what a chance there for Ryman. A beautiful little flick from Kevin Keegan. Presented Ryman with a great chance, and he made no contact whatsoever. And now I can see that Hamburg have brought on a substitute. With all the hustle and bustle of things going on, I didn't spot him coming on. But uh, number 14, Horst Bertel, has come on, and Frobesch has gone off. So Nessie, as uh, Kevin Keegan likes to call Horst Rubesch, has gone off. And Horst Battle with the number 14 shirt, there he is, has come on. Kals. Wayne have also brought on a substitute, by the way, uh, Number 12, Gruber, has come on in place of the, the left-back horseman who was wearing the number three shirt. So both teams at the moment have used one substitute. They've got one each left, Maimering. Well stopped by Schwarzenbeck. And Breitner. Rubenegger with a good ball, not offside. Breitner, can he get a shot in? He can! Cargas with his feet. That was a great move down the uh, right-hand side of the field there. By Bayern Munich. Paul Breitner starting in it and almost finishing it off as well. As you can see, still no score. Hamburg nil. Bayern Munich nil. 
Now a corner for Hamburg. Reimann taking it. Pulls it back to Kaltz. Reimann has got brighter.